G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. There's some impressive engineering evidenced within the wreckage of the Antikythera mechanism. Not the least of which is the accurate division of circles for both filing the gear teeth and drilling holes. It's even more impressive when you consider that the average module of the device is a little less than 0.5. The tips of the gear teeth are separated by about 1.5 millimetres, and the holes in the calendar ring groove are separated by less than a millimetre. The current assumption is that division was achieved using a set of dividers and other basic scribing tools. For non-prime numbers, a large factor of a given tooth count can be marked out and then further subdivided for the final tooth division. In this case, the tooth count that I'm dividing is 64, and the initial factor that I've selected is 16. Starting from a fixed position on the perimeter, the first interval is determined by trial and error, by walking the dividers around the wheel. Once a uniform division has been determined, the dividers are then used to mark out that course division. The final tooth divisions are then placed within each of those course divisions, either by again walking the segment with dividers or simply splitting it by eye. A similar approach can be applied to prime numbers. It is more time consuming given that it requires dealing with fractional counts instead of integers, but it is doable. Although by no means would I describe any of this as easy. In fact, it's quite a challenge to manage the errors. Modern precision dividers and vision magnification are essentially a requirement for success. If I remove those modern advantages, as would have been the case in the ancient world, then something becomes immediately apparent. The smaller the module of the wheel, the more impractical this method becomes. Or, put another way, if I were to scale everything up, the job would become much easier, and potentially much more accurate. Working with only the naked eye and simple dividers, this fact would not have been lost on the original maker. OK, now set that to one side for the moment. There's something else about this method that's worth noting. It doesn't do anything to assist with the many repeated tooth counts within the mechanism. There are seven wheels with 60 teeth, four with 50, three with 53, and so on. Of particular note is the high probability that two of the wheels have the large prime number of 223 teeth. That's a lot of task repetition that any maker, no matter what era they might be from, would have wanted to avoid. Now certainly a master version of each count could have been made to transfer the divisions to subsequent wheels. But this would at the very least have required a simple platform to register the blanks with the master wheel. And having tried it, it's not particularly easy to transfer the markings without introducing an unacceptable error. If such time-saving concepts were considered at all, then surely the issues discussed so far would have drawn the maker to at least consider the possibility of simply scaling up the divisions on a jig designed for repeated use. It could have been constructed from a flat piece of wood using only basic tools and would have required no more than a few days to complete. The easiest non-prime numbers could have been marked out first. I started with 60 divisions, using the larger factor of 10 and then further subdividing into intervals of six. Each step up in value leverages the factors of the adjacent counts, speeding up the task significantly. And again, the prime numbers are a little more work, but because the diameter of the circle being divided is so much larger, the intervals are also much larger. So the scribing error is proportionally reduced. By moving the divisions out to a much larger diameter than the wheels, the resolution is effectively increased beyond what it would be if stepping off the divisions directly onto the wheel surface as before it's much easier to minimise the angular error, particularly when restricted to only non-precision tools and no magnification. A pin in the centre is all that's required to register each of the wheels on the platform, and a simple bushing means that the pin can rotate freely without wearing out the hole. In use, the wheel would be placed upon the central pin, with a simple adhesive to lock it in place. In this case, I'm using shellac resin.
There are several ways to mark off the intervals. One way is to use dividers to scribe a small arc on the perimeter whilst stepping around the divisions. But an alternative is to use a simple straight edge. I made a riser that will lift it up parallel to the top surface of the wheels. I also made a small pin to fit to the straight edge to help locate it in the division markings. And as a convenience when using it, I've put in a set of markings down one side to make it easy to confirm that the pin is engaged in the correct division circle. Once in use, the advantage of a jig like this becomes clear. The guesswork of stepping the intervals off around the actual workpiece is replaced with a relative confidence of knowing that the hard part of the job has already been completed. Errors have been checked and counts confirmed, all on the larger and more accurate scale of the jig. And this is the key point that I'd like to make. This looks like a more complex approach. But in reality, it uses only tools known to have existed at the time of the mechanism's creation. Most importantly, no vision magnification is required to achieve a consistent, successful result. Compared side by side, the accuracy of each method is about the same, which says a lot for the second method, given that no magnification was used. But when it comes to time to completion, there's no contest. It's minutes for the second method versus potentially hours for the first, especially for the larger tooth counts. Which brings me to the second big payoff of the jig, dealing with repeated tooth counts. The 60 division ring, for example, provides the markings for 15 different wheels and pinions, generating a massive time saving just on its own. It's also worth pointing out the two largest wheels in the mechanism. One of them, E3, is required to have 223 teeth to perform its role within the mechanism. B1 also most likely had 223 teeth, but that number plays no apparent role in the mechanism's calculations. It could easily have been any number between, say, 200 and 280. So if it was indeed 223, then that choice is interesting, because there are few reasons to select that more difficult prime number over the more easily divided alternatives. Unless, of course, it already existed on a jig, in which case it would be an entirely logical choice. Now you've probably recognised that what I've made is essentially a classic manual dividing plate. And I understand completely that I'm suggesting something more than a little bit radical. That perhaps the ancient Greeks had a manual dividing plate a very long time before such a thing is generally accepted to have existed. But just to be clear before I wrap this up, I'm proposing this method as an addition to the manual division technique, not as a substitute. If it existed at all, and it's a big if, then I would expect both methods existed side by side and were simply applied as the circumstances required. For a higher module device with relatively few wheels, like for example the Byzantine sundial calendar, manually stepping off the teeth would have been accurate enough. So it's easy to imagine the worker just not bothering with the time investment of a jig. But I think once the module gets below 0.5 and if there are multiple repeated tooth counts, then the motivation to come up with a solution like a dividing plate gets much stronger. As to whether it actually existed, well, who knows? Maybe the ancient Greeks just had really good eyesight. For now, it's a bit of fun speculation and I share it with you only because it's something that the process of reconstructing the mechanism has led me to consider. I'll continue to use both methods throughout the rest of the build and see what else turns up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Now if building geared mechanisms is your thing and you'd like to help me make more of these videos, then I've got just the thing for you. A modern reproduction of the second oldest geared mechanism from antiquity, the device known as the Byzantine Sundial Calendar, also known as the London Sundial Calendar. I'm giving it the full reproduction treatment, but more from the perspective of how an 18th century clockmaker might have tackled the project. So you'll see all of the techniques and materials that I've started to explore with the Skeleton Clock project, but developed further to work on this much more condensed scale. Patrons get the same deal as for the first Patron Series project. Exclusive access to the build videos, 
free plans for the patron series projects, and of course the added bonus that one lucky patron will get to keep the finished project at the end of the build. Visit patreon.com forward slash clickspring to find out more. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.